بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله as we propound this idea of post Islamic psychology and how we base our therapy or our uh, way of uh, reflection using uh, scientific terms of neurobiology or using uh, methods that have to do with neuroscience and so on. We, we must not forget that the basis of positive Islamic psychology is Islam itself. So we can have many toolkits which I am propounding to you one by one and then you can have this whole series of toolkits for positive Islamic psychology, cognitive behavior therapy. But what is important is we got to go back first to the fundamental. All right, the fundamental is that basically how our positive FET, eh? our positive feelings, emotions, and thoughts in our salah, in our zikir, and other ibadah. How we are going to understand this from the perspective of Islam. Naturally, in the, uh, when we apply this, we will describe it slightly differently from our great ul alim ulama of the past or other scholars in, in, in fiqh, in usuluddin, in tawheed in all the aims of Islam. Naturally, they have a far better idea of explaining it from the perspective of the Quran and the Sunnah. I'm giving you an overview so that we don't be lost in this glamour of just using just neuroscience only because in the modern world, people who are psychiatrists or psychologists, they become arrogant. That everything that exists whether peacefulness, calmness, acceptance, surrender, submission, forgiveness. They use those terms, but they deny the Creator, they deny Allah. Or they may even use the term, oh, this, all this come from the intelligent universe. So, seek from the intelligent universe. May I ask, who is that intelligent universe? All right, you can change the term, but if you want to evade this whole reality that we are bounded by, in Islam, by the belief and the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm going to explain to you this whole idea of how we can fortify our feelings, emotion and thoughts eh? in our salah, in our zikir, in our remembrance of Allah, in our other ibadah. First, understanding the fundamental idea of the basic principles. You can never get out of it. So whoever teaches you anything outside that dream, then you have to be a little bit skeptical. Because, uh, as I say, this idea of our salah, our zikir, our ibadah, is all within the framework of Islam and has been taught by our great uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu to his sahabas, to the tabi'in, tabi tabi'in, to all the great scholars that has developed many, many uh, approaches that bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, so if you want, for example, modern, modern contemporary scholars that you can study in great detail, for example, you can go to Sheikh, Ab Sheikh Abdul Hakam Murad Winters. Fantastic! details that you can study in terms of the details of how you're going to approach your ibadah, your salah and so on. Or Sheikh Hamza Yusuf Hansen, or uh, many other scholars that you can study. These are contemporary scholars that you can open the YouTube and you can see how beautifully they explain in great depth and detail. Uh, using traditional books, uh, you may refer, they may refer to books from the various scholars of the past and you go through a series of studies with them. And inshallah, you'll find that those detailed explanation is so uh, deep and so intellectually sound and so true that it will bring you to tears to understand how deep is this ilm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon this ummah. So I'm not going to that direction, but I'm just giving you some basic ideas, references from those teachings and I summarized it in the various form. Eh? For example, we must understand our purpose in life for our progression. That means in our life, we have our feeling, emotion and thoughts progression. So our feelings, emotion and thoughts, these are, okay, we use this term, all right, to represent 
in Islam we can say that this represents our nafs or our self because finally at the at the spiritual level we are energy beings at the quantum level we are energy beings so we have feelings emotion and thoughts all right but this as i see need a lot of discussion but we are not directing to that direction we're directing to how we understand first our purpose in life and how in doing so we progress to become a true mu'min a true muslim and how we can then uh, help others to achieve peace happiness and success in this world and the hereafter so our basis always in the quran allah start with taqwa uh, you have many many verses ittaqullah fear allah be conscious of allah if you do good eh? so all the time allah tells us about taqwa so what the, what does taqwa means eh? there are many interpretation of taqwa but first when we start our ibadah or our salah our worship when we say allahu akbar we must bring to our feelings emotion and thoughts what consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is present he is allah is nearer to us than our jugular vein and he hears even though uh, where, where we can reach the stage in which we have this feeling that Allah is seeing us all the time even though we cannot see Allah Allah is seeing us so when our ibadah when we start our ibadah we say Allahu Akbar we straight away bring to our feelings emotion and thoughts or you can call it our mind God consciousness and then we bring this idea of fear of transgression uh, when we cite for example the Fatiha uh, when we recite the Fatiha, we say, Iya kana abudu wa iya kana sta'in to you, we worship to you, we seek help from Ihdina siratul mustaqim, show us the straight path. Siratul ladina an'amta alayhim, the path of those who receive your grace. Ghairil maghdubi alayhim, not the path of those who transgress. Alright? So we fear that transgression. Ghairil maghdubi alayhim, or atolin, or those who have gone astray. So this level is very important because we must understand back, we are doing this not not because we want to meditate not because we want uh, something from the dunya or what whichever that, that you can request in your sujood in whatever you can do that but the purpose fundamental purpose is taqwa from taqwa then we would then be able to develop our feeling emotion and thoughts towards what this is very important because this is where islam is islam is surrender and submission to allah what's the meaning of islam surrender and submission to Allah so when we surrender and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will then remove the fear of the dunya the fear of others because we submit only to Allah uh, in our worship we put no partners unto him so we surrender and submit to him so that we do need, don't need to surrender to all the evils of the world we don't need to surrender to the for example the evil dictators or the evil uh, uh, politicians or the evil crooks or the scammers or the murderers so many of this in the social and you see you you they create fear or gangsters or mafia whatever it is they try to create fear in you but in islam our fear solely relies on our submission and surrender to allah from then we free ourselves from the fear of others so once you have done that then your next level would be then you develop within your feelings and thought of peace this is very important so in your prayer you receive sakina allah brings in sakina into your heart all right so this sakina descends on you and you feel the joy because at this level then you have the joy of worship your worship become a joy it's not a show anymore all right so naturally you have to bring your feeling emotion and thoughts in the progressive manner huh? all right and then finally at the highest level you develop love this is the most important where we have this hubbullah our hub our love of allah our love of prophet muhammad our love of all in the ummah all humanity all godly creatures and so on so when we develop this then we achieve total success in this world and hereafter so whatever that we want in life is actually the foundational ideal for a balanced life for a peaceful wonderful feeling emotional thoughts mental states are imbued in the very basic fundamental idea of salah so when we do salah five times a day it's not that, ah, it's just sure i go to pray to allah no allah does not need our prayer but we need his gifts of god consciousness submission and surrender he gives his gifts of peace and joy 
his gift of love and then we achieve the totality of the meaning and purpose in life so that inshallah our ibadah become accepted to us and when we do that inshallah we will not have this turmoil of anxiety of depression of fear of this dunya of fear of dying of fear of all the thousands and thousands of kind of fears that this modern civilization have created that says that even children now are living in fear uh, they have done studies for example students are having depression Ch students children are having depression they're having fears they're having worries which which is ridiculous because they have no anchor and our anchor is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our love is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our submission is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek the joy of salah the joy of zikr the joy of other ibadah in our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to receive his descent on his mercy and mercy and mercy of endless sea of mercy that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon his goodly creatures in this world and only to his goodly creatures in the hereafter so what is important is for us to understand that if we're going to teach you all fields of psychology your fundamental idea is always back to our basics in Islam and our basics in Islam under our Arkanul Islam uh, we say the Shahada then we implement the Shahada in our Salah in our Zikr and in our other Ibadah so that we will be first and foremost a person accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when He accepts you and gives you the peace, the happiness and the love you do not need all other kind of love so this is the basis in which I want to bring in because I'm going to give you other toolkits but always help yourself understand your purpose and meaning and how you can progress developing your feeling, emotion and thoughts towards taqwa, submission to Allah develop peace, develop love and finally you achieve the fulfillment of being uh, the servant of Allah that is accepted by Him for your good uh, living in this world and the hereafter so inshallah we would then understand this and I will give you other toolkits so that inshallah be, well, from this basis onward uh, I hope I have uh, given you a framework so that there will be no con confusion in future because we're going to do a lot of other techniques based on neuroscience, based on meditation, based on reflection which is within the previous Islam but it could be variation to it and those things are something that you can implement in your life inshallah with the grace of Allah. Thank you.